gang mold using 5110F fast silicone. In this video we're going to explain the process of making a silicone gang mold for little decorative bolts. Now parts like this typically you're going to produce in the hundreds if not more than that for decorating sets, haunted houses, that sort of thing. So what we're going to show here is how to take a mold of an original object and then reproduce it as a gang mold for mass production. And as an added little bonus, we're also going to show how little parts like this can pair nicely with our Iron Bee metal coating. So more about that later. But for now, let's get started with the bolt that we're going to mold. Now this is a little nut and bolt that I had sitting around the shop. And we're going to mold it coming through a piece of foam core board so the end result will look like a bolt that's holding a metal plate onto a surface. And parts like this are really popular for haunt interiors and themed environments. And again, really go well with the rust look. So we have a lot of customers that rust, drywall, foam core, all kinds of surfaces, and then use that in conjunction with resin hardware like this to dress out a themed environment. Now the first thing we're going to do is prepare a piece of foam core board. We're going to cut a small hole in that so we can screw that nut and bolt together through the foam core board. And that allows the uh, one side of that to be on the other side of the foam core board and the business side, so to speak, the side we're going to mold coming out the top. Now I'm applying a generous layer of Vaseline to the bolt here before I screw that nut onto it. And the reason for that is to keep the silicone from seeping down in between the two. So by doing that, by putting that Vaseline in there uh, fairly generously, that prevents the silicone from seeping down. And this is a, a really good trick for molding any kind of mechanical parts where you're worried about silicone seeping into it. It's a good idea to fill up that part with Vaseline or pure petroleum jelly to prevent the silicone from then displacing the air inside the part. Now once I've got that secured, I'm ready to glue a little mold tube around my part. Now because this carriage bolt won't allow this to sit flat, I'm just going to use a couple of pieces of scrap protolina clay for now. But later on when I pour the silicone, I'm actually going to move this across the shop on a mixing bucket to allow that to sit flush and allow that carriage bolt to hang freely underneath. So now I'm securing that mold tube with some hot glue. And now we're ready to release our bolt and nut and of course the inside of that mold tube. And even though silicone doesn't really want to stick to those surfaces, always a good idea to do a light spray of Zip 301 mold release. Now once I've released my part, I'm also going to flip this over and add a little bit more hot glue to the underside. And this is just to ensure that we don't have silicone leaking out from the bottom here. So just added insurance. You could also do this with another scrap piece of uh, protolina clay. But again, hot glue is a great way to fix all these things. And funny thing about hot glue, there seems to have been a change in some of the hot glue formulas over COVID. So uh, I found that some of the floral hot glue that you find in some of the hobby stores tends to work the best, but some of the bulk hot glue that I found through Uline uh, tends to inhibit the silicone mildly, but it does cause it to be a little sticky where it comes in contact with that. So something to be aware of. Now we're going to mix a very small batch of 5110F platinum silicone. And 5110F of course is mixed one to one by weight or volume. Very simple silicone to use, one-to-one -one mix ratio, very low mix viscosity, so it's easy to pour. It has about a 2,500 centipoise mix viscosity. So in most cases, for simple molds, you won't have to vacuum degas, but always a good idea. Anytime you're making a silicone mold, it's always a good idea to vacuum degas your silicone. But this has a working time of about six to eight minutes at 75 degrees and a one-hour demold. So great for fast projects like this. And even though it is low viscosity, you can still thicken it up with our Thixo. Now, once we've got everything secured, we're ready to pour our silicone. And again, this is just a very small batch of silicone that I mixed up here, and I still had some left over. So always a good idea to keep some other little molds sitting around that you can use up that extra silicone. Now, while that silicone mold sets up, I'm going to go ahead and build the mold box for my gang mold. And this way I use my time wisely, contrary to the accusations of my fourth grade teacher, but that's, I digress. But 
Now I kept this gang mold fairly small for the sake of this video. I didn't want to sit and cast nuts and bolts all day. So I just made this a four piece gang mold. So I'm making this box big enough to hold four bolts. And you could obviously do this technique to hold 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 bolts. It's all up to you and how big you want to make this. So I'm just making a row of four bolts. And again, right now I'm just building the mold box while that silicone sets up. And that way when I'm ready to demold that, I can immediately transition to making that gang mold. So now I'm ready to hot glue that box together and that way everything's ready to go. All I need to do is cast a few little bolts and put these in securely at the bottom of this uh, new mold box and then I'm ready to pour that gang mold. Now an important aside, if you saw our video we did the other day about a resin master mold, once you have a gang mold like this made, it's easy to make a master mold for this to produce a lot more gang mold. So more about that later. But now our silicone has set up and it's always good practice to check what's in your mixing cup. Make sure everything was thoroughly mixed and set up before you start messing with your mold. So now we're ready to cut this open and pour some little bolts. So the main reason for this process is obviously working from one mold to make one of these bolts at a time doesn't even take a full ounce of resin. So the idea here is by making this one small mold, we do have a little bit of leg work to do up front where we cast multiple copies of this bolt in resin using these little bitty batches of resin. But once that's done, we now have a gang mold where we could pour 20 or 30 at a time. Now here I'm using some of the TC802 casting resin and TC802 is mixed one to one by volume and this is a very low viscosity, very fast setting resin. So it's perfect for these small parts like this where you just need to turn around lots of parts in a hurry but you need good accurate bubble free parts. So we're going to mix this up again one to one by volume and then pour that into our mold. Now TC802 has a working time of about two minutes and a demold time of about 10 minutes. And I'm just poking at a couple of bubbles I saw there in the cast. So it's real easy to turn around several bolts or dozens of bolts in a short amount of time. But the whole idea here is to minimize the work. Once you do the original work on that first gang mold, the work is done where you can mix up larger batches of resin like something like TC804 to do much larger batches. So there's our first bolt out of the mold and now we're going to cast several more. We're going to trim those up and make sure they're sanded so they sit nice and clean in the bottom of our new gang mold box. And again, there's no rule that says we only have to do four bolts. I'm just doing four for the sake of this video, but typically on something like this, I would do maybe a couple of dozen of these. And that way you get the most bang for your buck when you're mixing up a batch of resin to pour on this. Now I don't show it here, but we're using hot glue again to secure those bolts at the bottom of that gang mold. And once those are secure with some hot glue with about a quarter inch to three eighths inch gap between the hardware there, so we make sure that silicone is nice and strong between those, we're now going to release that mold box with some Zip 301 mold release. Now it's important after you spray your parts with mold release, give that release time to outgas so you don't wind up with little gas bubbles or a little pitting occurring on the surface of the mold. So make sure you give everything plenty of time to dry. Now we're checking the volume of our mold box and we're ready to mix up our batch of silicone. Now I'm not going to cover the process of calculating volume because we've done that in other videos. So on the end screen of this, be sure to check out, I'm going to post a link to our video where we calculate volume and also a link to our master mold video. Both of those are really important, but especially the master mold, because if you're doing this process, if you're doing a lot of hot hardware or uh, themed environments and things like that, where you're generating a lot of little knobs or uh, bolts and nuts and things like that, really a good idea to make sure you know this gang mold process and the master mold process so you can mass produce these little guys on a massive scale because again if you're doing themed environments with uh, rusted metal this is the best way to make these little bolts that you can stick on later before you do your paint job. Now we're going to be vacuum degassing this silicone and you want to make sure you have plenty of room in your mixing cup to allow for the silicone to expand and collapse. 
Interesting note that in really humid weather, sometimes your silicone can expand up to two to three times the original volume in the vacuum chamber. So be aware of that. Something about humid weather and vacuum degassing. So anyway, we're now ready to pour our mold. And you'll notice that we have a margin around the bolts of about three eighths of an inch to uh, maybe a little over a quarter inch in some areas. But the nice thing is that uh, 5110 Fast is a really tough, stretchy silicone, so we can easily get away with that. And again, we're going to check what's left over in our mixing cup first. Always a good idea to do that to make sure everything has handling strength before you start pulling it out. And there you see, when you have a nice, clean mixing container like that, that's a good indicator that you've mixed everything properly and that everything should be good inside your mold. And a foam core box is perfect for this kind of application. So even if you're making a gang mold with 30 or 40 bolts in it, a foam, foam core box is perfect for building that dam to hold that silicone in. And now ready to demold our bolts. And we're ready for casting. We're going to do a little bit of cleanup work on our finished mold, but now our gang mold is ready for casting. And now, instead of one sad little bolt, we can produce four at a time. So you can see there where easily you could go into much bigger production by making gang molds that would support the casting of, say, 20 or 30 of these at a time. So I'm just going around the edge with my scalpel, cleaning up that extra silicone coming off the, the bottom of the mold. And at this point, this is where we could easily transition to making a resin master mold. So taking that mold, putting it in the bottom of another box and making a resin master mold of this gang mold. And then that would allow us to reproduce multiple molds. And again, that's really important if you're doing a lot of mass production of a particular object like this, especially decorative pieces like this, where you know you're going to be putting a lot of little resin bolts onto a set. That's where you need a lot of these, and you actually will need to reproduce the mold in mass. So now we're ready to do our first round of casting. So I'm just mixing up a small batch of more of the TC802, but this time I'm adding some of our Polypig Onyx Black to this, and that way we get a charcoal gray color. And even though these are, bolts are going to be painted later on with the Iron Bee metal coating, by putting that black pigment in these so they cure kind of a charcoal gray, still a good idea because if for some reason over time someone chips a uh, painted bolt or something like that where some of the paint chips off, uh, you don't wind up with bright white plastic showing through your paint job. So always a good idea to pigment your resin in keeping with your paint scheme. And again, that way if something chips or peels or someone scrapes something later on, it doesn't immediately reveal itself as resin. Now this is about 10 minutes later and our bolts are ready to demold. And we didn't use any mold release, but if you do use mold release, remember, make sure you wash that off before you attempt to paint these. And now we're ready to stick these on some foam core and simulate some rusted metal. Now I'm just going to give a quick overview of the process of doing the Iron Bee metal coating and creating a rust effect on that. We have a lot of tutorials on YouTube on that, so be sure to check those out as well. Um, but overall, this, the process is pretty simple. I typically use the Primate Primer. This is a water-based primer that sticks very well to a variety of resin surfaces and metal surfaces, plastic all kinds of things. So Primate Primer is a great starting point. Uh, we actually have Primate in a number of different colors. So I typically like to use the black Primate when I'm doing the Iron Bee because again, um, if for some reason you get a bare spot where you didn't get something covered with the Iron Bee, then you still wind up with something that's in that same paint scheme. You wind up with black, which still looks like aged iron. And now we're applying our Iron Bee. And usually what I do on this is I brush this on and then I stipple out the brush strokes. Now, obviously, you could use a sea sponge or a paper towel to stipple that on. There's a number of ways to, to do this. We have a lot of customers apply this with a roller or even an HVLP spray gun. But the main thing is you put that on, let one layer dry, and then we're going to come back and do a second layer. Now, this is the critical part. And again, you want to learn more about this, check out our other videos on creating rust. With that second coat, though, it's really important that you remember to apply the patinas to that second layer before it dries. So here we're applying the light green patina, and you could do this with either light green or Tiffany green. Both of those will result in a very rich rust. 
but apply that light green, spray that on, and then we're going to spray on a light spray of the tan patina. And the tan patina you'll see here in just a second, that's what gives you that more orange, new rust kind of look. So we're just going to spray a very light spray of that. If you've seen our other tutorials where we do this, a lot of times I'll take the tan patina and create little rust drips and things like that. And sometimes I'll even apply that just with a sea sponge in very specific areas because, again, that, that tan develops into that more yellow rust. But there you have our finished rust, and you see where those bolts, those resin bolts, really complement the look of that rust. So that's a great way to create some old themed factory environments and that sort of thing. We have a lot of customers that use this to create haunt hardware or haunted house props, haunted house interiors, that sort of thing. But most importantly, what I wanted you to take away from this video is that process of turning a single part into a gang mold. And then if you are so inclined on the end screen here, I'm gonna link to the master mold, which can then take that to the next level where you can mass produce that mold. So be sure to check the videos out here on the end screen. And as usual, I'll put links to all the products we used in the video description, but everything is available on our website at brickintheyard.com. And if the spirit compels you, be sure to like and subscribe. And of course, comment with something insightful or snarky or whatever, because of course the algorithms like that. And as always, thanks for watching.